Chapter 9, Introductions and Conclusions, for use with the Public Speaking Project's Public Speaking the Virtual Text. Please note that not all material from Chapter 9 will be covered in this tutorial, and there may be some information in this tutorial, maybe one or two items, that might be different than material found in the textbook. Let's take a look at some of the functions of the introduction. Uh, one of the very first and most important functions is to catch the audience's attention. You want to catch and hold the audience's attention. You only have one chance to leave a good first impression on your audience, so you want to catch their attention right away so you can try and hold it for the remainder of your speech. You also want to be able to establish credibility so, so the audience will continue wanting to listen to your, to your speech. You want to let the audience know how you became knowledgeable and or familiar with the material that you're covering in your presentation or in your speech. You also want to state your thesis statement very clearly and perhaps even very concisely, but make sure your thesis statement is very clear and to the point. And then you can preview your main points or preview the rest of the material that might be coming along in your speech before transitioning into the body of your presentation. Some examples of attention getters are some things that you can use to catch the audience's attention can include storytelling or doing kind of a narrative, a brief narrative. Uh, you can reflect back on the past and maybe uh, think of something that happened in the past. You can use things such as startling facts or startling statistics as mentioned in the chapter. Uh, a real common one is using a quotation, uh, quoting someone else that is some, something that someone else said that is somehow related to your thesis statement or the content of your speech. Uh, also asking a question to the audience, whether that be a question that you ask for a show of hands or maybe just a rhetorical question uh, to get the audience thinking about something related to your topic. And you can also use humor. Whenever you use humor, please be careful to make sure that the humor that you use won't come across as potentially offensive to one or more members of the audience. Humor can be really powerful in a good way and potentially powerful in a bad way, but if used properly, it can really help catch the audience's attention and hold it for the remainder of your speech. A few things that you can keep in mind include uh, considering developing your introduction last after your body and conclusion have been developed. So once you have the body and conclusion all filled out, it's easier to go back and put the pieces together for your introduction. Uh, also, you want to be able to relate your introduction to the body of your presentation, of course, uh, and then, of course, transition smoothly from one part of the speech to the next. And then you also want to make sure your introduction is relatively concise and to the point, or relatively concise and succinct. Some of the functions of a conclusion include letting the audience know that you're getting to the end of your presentation. It's also an opportunity for you to present final appeals to your audience to encourage them in some way. It's also uh, where you will review the most important information of your presentation, particularly your thesis statement and your main points. And then when you wrap up your presentation, you want to try and end on a strong note. For more information on introductions and conclusions, please visit the Public Speaking Project's tutorials on creating effective introductions and conclusions at www.publicspeakingproject.org slash videomodules.html. The Public Speaking Project's textbook, Public Speaking, the Virtual Text, can be found at www.publicspeakingproject.org.